Insulin Receptors in the Brain by Hamid Wahib, U114-3085 and Linda Winika, U114-4253 for the research paper, follow the link below. Aims The research paper aim is to determine the efficacy of virus-mediated gene transfer to examine the functional activities of the insulin receptor in the hypothalamus including the examination of the role of central insulin receptors in the peripheral body composition and in the translocation of the insulin sensitive glucose transporter GLUT4. However, for our presentation the aim would be how lentivirus insulin receptor antisense would affect insulin receptors in the hypothalamus and hippocampus. Here is a diagram showing the structure of an insulin receptor. Insulin receptors are a transmembrane protein composed of two alpha subunits, which are the insulin binding domains, and two beta subunits, which are involved in ATP binding and are the tyrosine kinase domains. The research paper that we are looking at focuses on insulin receptors that are found in the brain. Activation of the insulin receptors in the brain will cause an increase in the uptake of glucose. A lot of experiments have been attempted to examine the insulin receptors in the brain, but there are complications involved with this examination. One complication is that insulin has a high affinity for another receptor called insulin-like growth factor, and so the insulin will bind to the insulin-like growth factor receptor more often than it will to the insulin receptor. This means that the insulin receptor will have less activity, which means it cannot be fully examined. However, with a virus gene mediated transfer, we can transfer a gene into rats and examine the insulin receptor. So here on the diagram, you can see that the phospholipid bilayer is in the middle. The alpha subunits are on the outside of the bilayer, hence why they are known as the extracellular subunits. Insulin will bind to the extracellular site and cause the cell to, take, to be able to take in glucose and on the other side of the phospholipid bilayer is the other end of the insulin receptor which is the beta subunit which contains the protein tyrosine kinase and as I have shown on the diagram is involved in ATP binding. Methods In vitro phosphorylation was done by adding insulin and ATP Insulin binds to the alpha subunits of the receptor which activate the insulin receptors. The activation of the insulin receptor causes an activation of beta subunits which contains the protein tyrosine kinase domains. This enzyme will then take a phosphate group from the ATP causing the beta subunits to be phosphorylated, therefore phosphorylating the whole insulin receptor. After the phosphorylation, the insulin receptor was added to an SDS page buffer and then to an SDS page gel to undergo gel electrophoresis. This gel electrophoresis separates the po protein which needed to be done before to the immunoblock analysis. Specimens For the immunoblock analysis, two types of rats were used. One type of rat had lentivirus control injected into the hypothalamus or the hippocampus, which meant that this particular virus did not have the gene of interest, so would not show any outstanding effects. The second type of rat had lentivirus insulin receptor antisense injected into the hypothalamus or the hippocampus, which would have produced some form of effect. Antisense is an inhibitor which inhibits the protein tyrosine kinase. The type of rats used were male and were the species Spragdali. Rats were anaphylatized and placed in stereotaxic apparatus and the lentivirus control or lentivirus insulin receptor antisense was injected into the third ventricle of the brain. Antibodies that were used for the immunoblock analysis. This diagram as you can see shows a classic example of an immunoblock analysis setup. In this research study, the researchers used two antibodies. The first one used was a primary antibody called antisera. The second one used 
was a secondary antibody called peroxidase labelled species specific secondary antibodies. The results. The immunoblots for figures A and B show bands that are approximately 95 kDa, which is a unit for measuring atomic mass. These bands represent the beta subunit of the insulin receptor, which was phosphorylated in the in vitro phosphorylation. The immunoblot was repeated three times. This was to ensure the research results collected were reliable. Doing the immunoblot analysis once would not be reliable as there would be nothing to compare it to. From the results, you can see that with or without the insulin receptor antisense, both in the hypothalamus and hippocampus, the beta subunits from the insulin receptors that were phosphorylated are still present. Figure C shows an autoradiograph analysis of the insulin receptor expression. The graph shows data that was plotted by insulin receptor percentage of control over the hypothalamus and hippocampus. Further rats that had lentivirus control injected into their hypothalamus and hippocampus, the insulin receptor expression percentage was 100. However, for the rats who had the lentivirus insulin receptor antisense injected in their hypothalamus, the insulin receptor expression percentage was significantly lower than the control. You can see that on the graph this percentage is reduced to 60. This reduction is due to the antisense as it inhibits the tyrosine kinase domain which as a whole would inhibit the insulin receptor. However, for the rats that had the lentivirus control injected into their hippocampus, there was just a slight increase in the insulin receptor expression percentage. As on the graph, the percentage is increased to 104. But overall, as this is not a significant rise, therefore we can say that the lentivirus control and the lentivirus insulin receptor antisense that was injected into the hippocampus of the rats expressed the same insulin receptor percentage control. Conclusion. From these results, it is deduced that the lentivirus insulin receptor antisense will affect the signaling and regulation of the insulin receptors of the hypothalamus, but will have no effect on the insulin receptors in the hippocampus. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed our presentation. And that's it. Goodbye.